that everything that happens in life is the will of God. That's why we pray your kingdom come, your will be done. You have a destiny with Jesus Christ. It's what Jesus accomplished at the cross for you. It's what he accomplished by the shedding of his blood. Hi, I'm Pastor Victoria Fury. Welcome to Times of Refreshing. So happy that you are watching these programs and learning the Word of God and letting the Word of God be imparted into your heart, transforming your heart. We've been ministering on the last program out of the book of 1 John and teaching on the lines of eternal life and assurance of eternal life. And we're going to continue along those lines today. And I'd like to pray for you. Father, I thank you for the viewing audience. I thank you for every person that is watching, Lord, every family, every household. I ask, Father, that you pour out your spirit upon them and reveal yourself to them, Lord. Heal their families. Heal their home. Heal their children. Restore them to you, Lord. I thank you for your ministry upon this program, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, today we're going to start out with 1 John chapter 5, starting with verse 1. Whosoever, that's you, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith is reliance upon Christ Jesus and the truthfulness of God. See, faith came by Jesus Christ. Grace came to you showing you that you were lost showing you that you are in need of a Redeemer, showing you that you have sinned against God and rebelled against God. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin was death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord being justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. We could not be justified by the law of Moses. We're justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. God was manifested in the flesh. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. John 1, 14, and the Word was made flesh. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we're going to continue in 1 John chapter 5. And we're going to go to verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Now I'm going to stop right there. I'm not reading the whole entire scripture. There's a cross reference in Romans chapter 8 verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We are the children of God. 
We become a child of God by faith in Christ Jesus. That word faith in the original Greek means reliance upon Christ for salvation and the truthfulness of God. It's his faith because it's a living faith. It's the operation of the faith of God that raised him from the dead, glorified him, glorified him. That's why when he prayed to his father, the same glory that I had with you, that same glory was going to be given to him being raised from the dead. Hallelujah. He's ever glorified at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to take you to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. In whom you also trusted. That means when you trusted in Christ Jesus. After that you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. When you're a true believer in Jesus Christ, you're changed in the inside. You're no longer living your life with selfish, sinful desires. You're living your life for Christ because of what he did inside of your heart by the Holy Spirit when you repented of your sins and surrendered to Jesus Christ and to live for him and him alone in his holy gospel. You started hungering and thirsting after righteousness and you begin to get filled with the word and rooted and grounded into the truth of the word. Your desires were for God. Your desires wasn't for your selfish, sinful uh, nature before. Jesus did a work inside of your heart and gave you a brand new heart. You passed from death unto life. Hallelujah. So in Ephesians 1.13, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance. Notice that. The Holy Spirit of promise is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. Now the redemption of the purchased possession is the redemption of our physical body. The Lord Jesus will come back. And when he comes back, there's going to be a shout of an archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ will rise first and those that are alive will be caught up together to ever be with the Lord. And our bodies, this vile body, will be changed like his glorious body. It will take on incorruption immortality it will never die we will ever be with the lord that is a promise from god of our eternal redemption of our physical body so when a person fully comes to christ they are acknowledging their iniquity they're acknowledging they've sinned and rebelled against god they acknowledge they they lived a life of a lie and unbelief. And the grace of God is coming and awakening your heart unto Jesus. Awakening your heart to the Lord Jesus, that it is in Jesus Christ and him alone that you are saved through the redemption price of the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. He wiped your sins away. He justified you by his blood. The Father raised him from the dead for your justification, declaring you righteous. And uh, he declares you righteous and holy and unblameable in himself because he bore your iniquity and transgression on the cross. So what imparts inside of you 
is by the spirit of the living God. You're born of his spirit, born of the word of God that lives and abides forever. Hallelujah. And you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of your inheritance. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty Savior. Hallelujah. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience among whom you also, we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, but God, who is rich in his mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. Jesus is the gift in your life to bring redemption to your soul. His soul was made an offering for your sin, and it was acceptable to our Heavenly Father that He paid the judgment for your soul on the cross by remitting your sin. And God is calling all people of all nations under heaven to repent before God and acknowledging their iniquity and transgression and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he brought redemption to the nation of Israel, he brought redemption to the Gentile nations, he paid the ultimate sacrifice for you to deliver you from the wrath to come. Jesus is highly exalted at the right hand of the Father and has been given all power in heaven and in earth. He is the Son of the living God, the Son of God and the Son of Man. The Son of Man, He paid the price for your soul. And He, was ju he justified you in His blood, declaring you righteous in Himself, delivering you out of darkness into the light, that the glorious gospel of Christ Jesus will shine into your heart. Hallelujah. We're going to go back to 1 John chapter 5, verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. The Holy Spirit comes in, and the witness of the Spirit is inside of you. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Now we'll go to Romans. Oh, excuse me. See, when you don't believe the record that God gave of his Son, and you reject Christ, you are under the Spirit of Antichrist that's already in the world. 
The spirit of Antichrist does not believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. They will have eternal damnation. If they die, they would be eternally lost. Verse 11 of 1 John chapter 5. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. In John 1, 4, it states, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. You go to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? We serve a living God. All the false religions and false gods of the world are all idolatry. There's one God, one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Go to verse uh, 15 of Hebrews 9. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of the necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the, while the testator liveth. Whereupon, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things by the law were purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. He appears in the presence of God for us. Verse 25. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he have often had suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Jesus put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. 
Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God, everlasting Father. Hallelujah. And if you go back to 1 John chapter 5, verse 12, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. And a cross-reference to that would be in John 3.36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. The wrath of God abides on those that reject Jesus Christ. They are under the wrath of God. But when they repent and turn away from sin and surrender to Jesus Christ and Him alone, he, Jesus will, His Spirit will come inside of you and you'll be sealed with the Spirit of promise which is the earnest of your inheritance in Christ Jesus. And you will be born of his spirit. Your sins will be wiped away. He'll give you a brand new heart. Your spirit will be born again. God will begin to write his word upon your heart. The Bible will come alive to you. Before it was hidden from you because you were living a life of a lie and an, uh, an unbelief. But when you turn to the Lord, He will abundantly have a pardon you when you acknowledge your transgression and iniquity and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ that He took away your sin and paid redemption price and was raised from the dead for your justification. God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world unto himself. And he was reconciling you at the cross. That's where the price of redemption was paid for. Hallelujah. 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you, that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. The name of the Son of God is Jesus. When the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary, Virgin Mary, in the city of Nazareth, the angel appeared in said, you are highly favored of God. What is going to be conceived in you by the Holy Spirit, you are bring forth a son. His, not, his name shall be called Jesus. He will be called the Son of the Highest. Jesus is the Son of the Highest. He is now bodily sat down at the right hand of the Father, waiting for all enemies to be under his feet. And that last enemy is death. We'll go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. And we know that the Son of God is come, hath given us an understanding that we may know him. That is true, that we are in him. That is true, even... In his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. He is the true God and eternal life. All the religions of the world, all the false gods of the world are all idolatry. This is your day to be delivered from false religion. 
This is your day to be delivered from false gods. This is your day to be delivered from idolatry, from unbelief, to be delivered from the lie and the deceitfulness of your heart and crying out to Jesus, acknowledging your iniquity to the Lord, acknowledging that you are a sinner and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is the Son of God, that he paid redemption price for you on the cross, that you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, justified by him, declared righteous by him. The Bible says when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe that God the Father raised him from the dead, your heart is believing. Your mouth confessions made to salvation. It's not about praying some little sinner's prayer. It's about a heart change. It's about surrendering to Christ. Because he's going to come back and he will come back with his holy angels, the Bible talks about. And he will take vengeance on those that know not God, nor obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus came to deliver you from this evil world. And someday heaven's going to be rolled up like a scroll, and so will the earth. And God's going to create a new heaven and a new earth wherein will dwell righteousness. The word of God teaches it. The prophets of old have taught it. Jesus even spoke about it in the Gospels. This is your day to be delivered. The Bible says, Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You can have this freedom and assurance in your heart of knowing that you have eternal life. The Bible declares it that you may know you have eternal life. I am so glad that you watched this program and the Spirit of God is speaking to you today. Trust in Jesus and Him alone. God bless you for watching. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB-TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.